Hello and welcome to module two. So in this module we're going to be looking at operators and conditionals and so this is really where stuff starts to get a little bit more fun uh, especially after we combine it with the next module. Um, this is where you really get the meat of programming and what uh, a lot of um, programming actually is involved with. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just get straight into it. Um, so first let's talk about what operators are. So we've already seen a couple of different operators. Um, so for example, we have addition, so we just understand what two plus two, uh, then the plus is called the operator, and then the two numbers on either side are called the operands. And so there's a whole bunch of these in Python. There's the standard ones that you would expect. Uh, so there's, uh, there's two major groups. So there's what's called uh, arithmetic operators and there's what's called uh, logical operators. And they actually serve two completely different purposes. Um, and so we'll start with arithmetic operators. And so arithmetic operators are, uh, let's say for example, you have uh, an age variable and you wanna say age is equal to 21 plus one. Um, then obviously you just, you just add a plus and then you're just adding the two numbers together. So this would be 22. Uh, subtraction is the same. It's just a hyphen to be able to do subtraction. Uh, Multiplication is an asterisk in Python. Um, so that's just how you do any multiplication that you need to do. And if you need to do division, this is where it gets a little bit different. Uh, there's actually two different forms of division. And so division, there's actually uh, the single division. So that's a single slash. And so what this does is it will give you a floating point value. So if I go ahead and run this, that's, if I go ahead and run this now, you'll see it's 21.0. And that's because what this will do is it will do its division and it will return back a floating point number into the variable. Um, there's another sort of division, it's integer division, which is two slashes. And doing this will return an int instead. It always rounds, uh, let me remember which way it rounds, hold on. It always rounds down. Um, so it always takes what's called the floor of the division. And so that means that it will always round down, even if you're at, you know, 9.9999999, it will always round down to uh, nine. <clears throat> and so there are some, uh, obviously with integers, you get things you expect. Uh, floating point numbers is more or less the same. Um, but there are some kind of weird ones, uh, specifically with collections. So strings and um, strings and lists, you do get some weirder behavior. So let's let's take a look at those. So let's go back to the example that we used last time. So let's do ages, and we'll do this as a list. So we'll say 21, 15, and 19. We'll make that equal to ages and uh, one neat trick which I did teach you last time is that you can actually make ages equal to the current value of ages and then um, use an operator to do something to it so let's say we'll do the so we're going to take the current value of ages we're going to multiply it by two and then we're going to store it back in ages and so currently ages is a list so if you want to place bets on what's going to happen, feel free to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what will happen. And what will basically happen is that it will take this list, it will make a copy of the list with multiplication, and it will add it to the end of this list. So I'll just show you this. So you can see the list has been repeated two times. If I want to do that, like 15, you'll see it's like the list has been repeated 15 times. So that's what multiplication can be used for. It can be used to basically take the same thing and mult and, and repeat all of the values in the collection multiple times. This works with strings, this works with tuples, this works with um, lists. Uh, I'm actually not too sure what happens with dictionaries. I, th I think if you just try and multiply them, I think it just gives you an error. Uh, I don't think you can just multiply a dictionary, but uh, well, I guess oh, we can... No, I, I, I'll, I'll put a comment or I'll, I'll, put a, yeah, I'll put a bit of information about this. Uh, no, okay, you know, let's just test it. Why not? I love testing stuff, so let's see. So let's just put uh, name. Kieran. Nope. I'd like to spell my own name right. So we'll do Kieran. Get the age, and we'll do 21. And we'll just say 
user is the user times 15, and let's see what happens. I assume it's going to throw an error. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, that's boring. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit weirder than that, but... Um, yeah, so for anything to do with strings or lists or tuples, uh, you can go ahead and do this, and it will just uh, duplicate the value that many times. Um, so addition... Addition, you can add two of the same collections together. So, for example, if I do ages is equal to 21, 15, and 19, and then I have ages 2 is equal to 10, 35, 20, something like this, uh, we can actually add the two of these together. So, let's just say ages is equal to ages plus ages and so this will give you uh, the two lists added together just like that as you can see they've been uh, added onto the end there uh, oh sorry uh, ages plus uh, there we go ages two there we go so they've been added onto the end together um, and so there's more details in the reading if you want to go ahead and do that and that will give you more details about some of the other weird cases to do with this um, but this stuff is all pretty simple. Um, this is just pretty pretty simple basic addition. Um, one thing that's really nice is that there's actually a shortcut for doing a lot of these operations. So as you can see, so not with this example, but um, let's just take the example before of the name. Uh, or sorry, uh, let's take the example before age. And so, as you can see, so age is equal to 21, and then if I want to say, let's say it's somebody's birthday, so I want to take it up by 1, I have to do age is equal to age plus 1, and so that takes the current value of age, adds 1 to it, and then assigns it to the age vari variable again. And so we can just see, so now it's 22. <clears throat> There's actually a way to make this a little bit simpler, uh, and you can actually do it a little bit shorter. And so that basically, the way that this works is you put the variable name on the left hand side and then you put the operator symbol equals to whatever you would put on the far right so in this case we'd have plus equals one and so this says take age take its current value and add one to it and then reassign it back into age so it's the exact same as we just saw and this actually works for all the different variables so all of this does is it literally just let's say so it just basically cuts this and pastes it on this side like that that's all that it does it just literally does that for you <clears throat> and so it's a pretty common way of writing things so it's good to get used to it especially if you get everywhere kind of somebody else's projects who um who uses the notation pretty commonly um it can be done with any of those operators i've shown you before so we can do h minus equals one and that will take the current value of age and subtract one to one from it and then reassign it back into the age variable which is why we get 20. Uh, you can do it with times equals so let's change this to like five for example and then it will multiply the number by five and then reassign it back into the variable and you can do it with division the floating point and integer versions of division as well so just a nice way to make things a little bit shorter when you're trying to write out your code. Um, there is one more operator, and this one's a little bit weirder. This is the modulus operator. It's not very, it's not usually a good idea to use it because it's actually pretty slow. Um, but I'll show you it anyways. So what the modulus operator does is it gives you the remainder of a division. And so if you know what the remainder of a division is, it's basically when you divide two terms, it's whatever's left over. <clears throat> This isn't useful for a lot of things, but one, things that it, one thing that it is really useful for is that if you're testing, for example, if something is even, you could say, uh, let's make a variable called is even. Um, we could say, let's say six, which is, an, which is an even number, and then percent, which is what is the modulus operator, and then let's say two. <clears throat> and so what this will do is it will divide six by two and then store the remainder of that back into the back into this variable which because this is an even number means it will be zero so if i go ahead and run this you'll see it's zero so you can use this in a lot of different ways uh actually a better way of doing this is let's say let's call this is odd instead 
And the reason why is because, like I said in the last episode, in the last uh, episode, the last module, um, false can be referred to as zero, and true can be referred to as one. So if you have this is odd variable, you can take, for example, an input from a user, modulus it by two, and then if it returns false, then it means that it's an even number, and if it returns anything other than false, then it's a, uh, or anything other than zero, then it's a, um, it's it's an even number, sorry. <clears throat> or it's, an, it's an odd number, sorry. So let's say, for example, if I go seven, then you'll see that this will be something other than zero, which in this case it's, is one. Um, and we'll see we'll, we'll see that use case later on. Um, all of this, so these operands er, operators, sorry, <clears throat> these arithmetic ones, are helpful for doing different actions inside your code. But one thing that's also really helpful is logical operators. And so logical operators, what they uh, what they do is they return a boolean, kind of similar to how this is, um, based on what um, what operator you provided. So uh, let me let me just ex let me just show you this first and then uh, it'll probably make a little bit more sense. <laughs> so let's say, for example, we have, we want to check if someone has their age, let's say it's 21, and we want to print whether or not their age is uh, greater than or equal to 21, for example. And uh, using the example that we had last time, we can say legal age and then print legal age. And so this will print true if, uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna print on that side. That's why that was doing that. There we go. Uh, so now when we do this, it'll print true because the age that I have listed here is greater than or equal to 21. Uh, I know it looks a little bit weird just because there's two different equal signs here. Um, but let's say, for example, let's do greater than 20 instead, just to make this a little bit simpler. So any age, if the age is greater than 20, then this will print true. Um, now let's change this to 18, and you'll see this actually prints false now. So these are super useful because you can, uh, obviously you can take input from a user, and then you can validate whether it meets a certain criteria. Um, so just like the example that I showed you here, the legal drinking age, for example, in America is 21. And so if somebody's age is less than 21, then you can have it return false and store that in a variable and then use that later on for whatever you need to do <coughs> in that instance. So if you have games or something like that that somebody has to be 18 to be able to see the trailer for, then you can, or somebody has to be 21 to be able to see the trailer for, or, uh, or 18 in Canada, which is where I am. So 18 would be how old somebody has to be, so they have to be greater than 17 to be able to see the trailer, then you know, oh, okay, so now I can let them see whatever the trailer is on my website. Um, yeah, and so there's there's a couple of ones. I'll just run through them really quickly. Uh, there's more information in the reading about this, so I'm not gonna spend too much time beating this to death, but uh, so there's greater than, which you've just seen, which basically you can pass it a variable or you can pass it just a normal number uh, and you can check if uh, if something is greater than something else <clears throat> there's also greater than or equal to and that's just exactly what you'd imagine so if something is greater than 18 or equal to 18 and this will print true so in this case it'll print true uh, because age is 18 which means it's equal to 18. Uh, also there's the flip side of that which is less than or equal to 18 uh, which it, this will still be true because it's 18 so it's equal to 18 but let's say less than or equal to 17 in this case, we'll run into it hitting false, uh, or it checking if the age is less than 17, we'll see false. Um, a use case for this might be, for example, if you have something like McDonald's play area where only certain ages are allowed in, like you have to be under the age of seven to go in or something like that, then this might be useful for that sort of a situation. <coughs> uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. On top of that, we do have something that just checks to see if someone, uh, to, to check 
if something is equal to. And so the way that that works is it's actually two equal signs instead of one. And so you can see here there's this is going to make it a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to get rid of this legal age variable here. I'm just going to put this directly in the print statement so it looks a little bit easier to see. Um, so as you can see, so I have age on the left-hand side, and the two equal signs means that I'm checking to see if something is exactly 18. And so if I go ahead and do that, then you'll see we get true on there. So this next one is a little bit weird. So this one is called the not operator. And so basically what it does is it reverses everything that happens. So in here, uh, where we're checking to see if age is equal to 18, uh, let's say we want to check if uh, age is not equal to 18, what we can do is say not age equal to 18. And so then this way, whenever age is equal to 18, it's false, but when it's any other number, like 19 for example, it's true. Um, this one's a little bit unintuitive a lot of the times, and it causes quite a few issues actually. Um, so I would try and avoid it unless the the only real use case for it is if you're checking if something does not exist. So the best use case actually is to do with uh, command line inputs. So let's say for example you have something like this where you have user input is equal to input and then you're saying enter some text. And then just for now let's just quickly print the input. And so with this, people can actually enter blank. And so what that means is that there's actually no text here at all. And uh, so let's say, for example, you wanted to check if there was any text here. What you could do is you could say, um, print not user input. And then if this would only be true if there's nothing in here, because an empty string is considered false. So whenever somebody has an empty string, it's considered false. So let's say I enter some other text like this then it's false. Um, so again, it's kind of counterintuitive. Basically what this would say is uh, if there, this is saying there's no user input. Uh, this is also useful later on for things like files because you can say um, like not file and then you know that a file doesn't exist and that sort of stuff. And so I'll show you, I'll show you that in the uh, in module seven, which is the extras module. Um, but yeah, definitely be careful with this one. This one causes a lot of issues. It's actually my second time recording this because of the fact that this caused so many issues. Uh, there is an example later on when I do the challenges that will explain this a little bit better, but just uh, I would say try and avoid being clever with this sort of stuff because clever often gets you into a lot of trouble with this. Um, so just make sure that you're when you're using it, you're using it for a good reason. Um, and that reason really should only be to check whether or not something doesn't exist. The next thing with this that, that's kind of cool about these logical operators is that you can actually chain them together. And so one of the ways that you can chain them together is by using an AND statement. And so let's say you want only people who are, um, let's say you have something where you want only people who, so let's take somebody's age again. Let's say they're 19 this time. And let's say you want something where people are, where their age is greater than 18 and their age is less than 30. So you want people between the ages of, um, of 19, I'm sorry, that's 20. Uh, let's just do equals two because that just makes this way easier. Um, you want people who are 18 and above um, or 30 and below. And so in this case, that's a bit true. But then if I go 31, then it'll be false. And if I go 17, then it will also be false. So you can chain you can chain a bunch of these booleans, uh, these, these logical operators together, basically. Uh, and booleans also, I should mention, you don't have to always use logical operators. If you've done this this sort of stuff earlier on in the code, uh, you can actually use variables here in place of this. So I can just put, instead, I can just put true and age is less than 30, and then we're fine. And then if I go to 31, then it works. Um, so you can put a variable in place here and that would be fine. Uh, yeah, so and what it means is that both sides of whatever you're typing in have to be true 
for the whole thing to be true. So both sides have to be true for the whole thing to be true. So if one side is false, the whole thing is false. If both are false, the whole thing is false. If both are true, then it's true. Uh, and I have more information about that on the reading. <clears throat> um, and the next one is uh, that you can do this sort of thing with is or. And so what or does is you just literally type out or. And this is true if either of them are true. So if one side of, of the or statement is true, then the whole thing is true. Um, it doesn't matter. So, so this will always be true, right? So if I, go, if I go ahead and run this, you'll see it's always gonna be true because one side is true. Now, if I say this is false, and so now both sides are false, then it's false. But let's say I make this 29. This will be true because this side is true and this side is false. So basically, both have to be false for it to be false, but only one has to be true for this to return true. Again, more information in the reading. Um, this sort of logical stuff takes a little bit of getting used to, so be sure to do a little bit of practice with this, uh, especially doing the exercises. It'll help you out quite a bit. Um, so the next one that we have on the list is going to be what's called the in operator. And so this is a super useful operator that a lot of people don't know about in Python, really useful. Um, what it does is it lets you give a value and check if it's in a collection. So let's say for example, we have ages. So we have 15, 21, 19. And let's say we wanna know, is there somebody in this ages collection that's 19? We can actually just do 19 in ages. And so in, you just literally type the word in. And when we run it, we get true because one of the numbers in here is 19. Let's say we're looking for somebody who's 25. When we run it, we get false because no one in the list is 25. Um, this obviously is super useful for lists like this, but again, lists are not the only collections that we have. And so I can say name, for example, and I can say instead, uh, Kieran in name, so I can check if there's any if there's a Kieran in the in the string. There we go. Um, and so this will search any part of the string to just find literally if there's just somewhere in the string that says Kieran. Um, super useful for finding things in lists or strings. Uh, this will be used quite a bit in the course, so just make sure you understand this one. Um, yeah, really, really useful. Definitely get used to it. Uh, I also have notes on the readings about bitwise operators. If you don't come from a low-level programming background, just skip straight over these. These are not important to understand for for the programming. You will maybe uh, maybe use these if you're writing a mix of C and Python code. You really typically won't use these very often in just pure Python. You don't see them very often, so just just don't even worry about it um, for the most part. Now, you're probably wondering, um, well, this is kind of cool, but I don't understand what the point is. Like, wh why, why do I care about returning Boolean values all the time? Like, what, what's the point of all this? And so this, the next part of this is talking about what are called conditionals. And so conditionals are basically ways for you to execute code based on those logical operators or Booleans from before. So for example, in this case, let's say we have name here. Um, we can, there's a couple of different statements here, so I'll just start with the first one, which is an if statement. And so this reads it kind of exactly as you expect. So let's say if um, John oops, in name print John is in the name, and then. Um, yeah, and so now when we run this, obviously this will be false. So when I run it, nothing will happen. But now let's say John Wood instead. Now when we run this, we see John is in the name. And so if statements are obviously really powerful. Um, they let you do, you basically they let you do um, run code based on whether something is true or not. And so um, to take another example, uh, let's take that is odd from earlier. 
and let's say uh, six multiplied by two. And so let's we can just say in this case because it will this statement will actually just return a boolean value. We can say if is odd print number is odd. And so let's pick seven instead of two. And now we get number is odd. But let's say we do eight, which is an even number. Nothing will print, right? Um, and so let's say you actually want something to print. So uh, if the number's odd, then print number's odd. You can then use another conditional statement, which is called else. And so else has to follow an if statement. And this basically says other otherwise than other than the situation that's been laid out above do this. So we can do print number is even. So now when we run this, we get the number is even, because the number is even. So you can see these are super useful. Um, also, let's just say, for example, let's take that name example from before. Uh, and then here, here, and Uh, we can actually chain together multiple of these using what are called elif statements. And so the way that that works is we have um, if, let's say, if John in name, print John is in the name, elif, and this basically says else, this is basically a combination of the words else if. And so what this means is that otherwise, if the condition that I'm writing after this is true, then do this. So in this case, let's say Kieran in name print. Kieran is in the name. And we'll just do two of those really quickly. LF would. In name print was in the name else print doe is in the name and so basically so now we have Kieran Wood in there and so what's gonna happen is it's gonna come through this it's gonna come through this list as we're going through so it'll first it'll assign the name variable the Kieran Wood string it's gonna come in here and it's gonna go if John's in the name which is gonna be false because John isn't in the name so it's just going to go, okay, move on to the next thing. Elif Kieran in the name, and Kieran is in the name, so this is true. So it's going to execute this statement below. And then Elif would in name, which is also true. So it's going to print this statement. And then else, which means that if none of the above conditions are true, then print doe is in the name. And so now if I run this, we get Kieran is in the name. And so the reason why it didn't move on to this next one is because elif basically means, it means stop here, right? And so if we wanted to, for it to keep going, then what we could do instead is we could just do if and elif here. And then now when we run this, Sorry, yes, that wasn't working as expected. Um, again, elif will only happen if none of the things that have run above are true. Because it says, it says to stop, but if anything happens above it, then it won't get to the elif statement. So in this case, so because I had elif on would, even though um, it was the first elif statement, it didn't execute because it stops after it sees if Kieran in name, it just stops. It doesn't bother trying to move on to the elif statements. So really you should only run elif statements if you only want the first condition that gets met to run. And so now if I go ahead and I remove all that and go, we'll just get doe is in the name because none of these were true. So it just skips all the way down to the else statement and runs that. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with this um, is that, as you can see, after I typed the conditional, 
I put a colon, and then I, I went to the next line, so I hit enter to go to the next line, and it indented. So Python relies on having indentation. So this is basically, um, the formal term for it is that you have your statement, and then you have your code block. And so code blocks is anything that has a col has this colon after it. Um, you're gonna have the code that you want to run at least one space indentation more. So it doesn't have to be four. Like I've done four here just because it looks nice, and that's how I set up my IDE. But I could just do a single space if I really wanted to, and that's fine. That would this would work the same way as everything else. Um, standard in Python is four or two spaces. Um, it depends on who you talk to. I personally prefer four just because it's a little bit more, um, it gives you a little bit more breathing room for the statements. So I would say if you're, uh, if you're asking me, just do four and then put whatever code you want in here because what I can do, and I can show you how this works, let's say I type something in here like hello, then let's put John Wood just in the name just so we can see this. You can see we have John is the name executed, but then because this is at the indentation level that stepped like one out from there, um, this just runs. And so basically anything that's at an, a further indentation level only runs when it's supposed to basically. So in this case, if John and name run this, this runs regardless of anything. And then because whoop is in the name, it also ran this. Okay. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. I apologize. Um, that got a little bit, a little bit out there for part of that. So I, I do apologize for that. But hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. And uh, let's go ahead. So first off, uh, I would recommend trying the exercises and challenges yourself, and then coming back here and you can watch me complete the exercises and challenges. Okay, so through the power of movie magic, uh, we're now a couple days later. Um, I've actually just implemented another feature that I figured I would let you guys know about, um, which is that instead of having to just copy this and paste it into a file all the time, uh, I've actually added these download buttons for the exercises, the challenges, and the solutions. Um, so you can go ahead and download all three of those if you want. I'm just going to download the exercises and challenges, and then we'll go through them right now. All right. So, exercise one. So I provided some sort of code below that creates a result variable and a number one variable. Your goal is to make number one equal to 11 after the operations that have already been done to it. So at this point, um, well, actually, let's just quickly take a look. So when you're doing uh, this sort of stuff, and let's say you don't know what a variable number is, um, what you can do is you can just print it. Let's just find out exactly what's, uh, what, what this variable is. So this is inside of, sorry, uh, I've switched terminals again now, I apologize. Um, oh, sorry, this is in the wrong directory. Jeez, you can tell that I'm well prepared for this. Um, okay, so this is Python, Python 101, offer your conditionals exercises. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and just run this. And so currently the value is at 57. Okay. So uh, I guess the easiest way to do this is just subtract equals 40 uh, minus equals, what are we, so we're at 57, so we minus equals 46, jeez, it's been a long day, 46, let's take a look at what we got, looks like we're right, okay, cool, so that's one way of doing it, there's a whole bunch of other ways of doing it, you can get as fancy as you really want to, basically you're trying to just manipulate the number from 57 down to 11, um, so yeah, that seems to have worked. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at exercise two. So we will, oh, actually exercise two has no starter code. So take input from the command line, convert it to an int and pick a range zero to 10 and create a set of conditional statements that prints the string representation of the number. For example, if someone put it in eight, then it would print eight. Okay, perfect. So I'm just gonna pick a number between zero and five. So let's just do um, chosen number is equal to int input enter a number b 
between our zero and five. Okay. So we'll do if chosen number is equal to zero, print zero. If okay, you know what? Let's just two, three, four, five. Doot doot doot. One, two, three, and I missed one. Four, five. Okay. Else. Oh, oops. Sorry. Print. Uh, value given is not between zero and five. Okay, so in this case we have one, so if it ends up, uh, we can actually, because there's only going to be one number, um, this would be a good case for using LF, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it for each of these. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, by the way, doing that multi-line editing, if you hold Alt and then click, that's how I, that's how I do all this fancy stuff inside of Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm just holding the Alt key and then doing it and then clicking on each line. That's how I'm adding multiple lines at the same time. So one, we have one, two, we have two, three, four, four, and five is five. So super simple. If we go ahead and run this again. Pick a number between one and five, or zero and five, let's go two. We get back two. Um, so yeah, so again, with the else if statements, just remember that in this case, because there's only gonna be one right answer, it's fine to do this. Um, but for example, let's say we had this and we were saying, you know, pick, you know, three numbers, then you might not want to have all of these, uh, these else statements, you might want to instead have an if statement with all that sort of stuff, so. Um, just something to keep in mind. And then remember if, it, again, we've done a little bit of error catching here, so if we go ahead and do six, we'll get value is not a given number between zero and five, and then also if we do negative one, we've handled some of our weird edge cases here, so. Yeah, always a good idea to do whenever you're writing code. And do, let's just go to that. Okay, now this one does have some code in it, okay. Before running the code below, try to figure out which print statement will execute and why. Then uncomment the code and check if you are right. Well, I've already uncommented the code, but we haven't run it yet, so. Um, let's see what we have. So number is initially equal to zero. Okay. And then at this point, we're saying plus equal to 15. So at this point, the number is 15. And at the, actually, you know what? Let's just, again, make use of that multi-line that I was just talking about. So we'll just do smooth number is and let's see what the number value is at each of these points so the number is 15 here we're saying divided by 2 so 15 divided by 2 is 7 and some change since it always runs down that means that at this point it's going to be 7 um, times 6 so 7 7s are 49 so minus 7 is going to be 42 uh, and then 42 minus equals 4, so it's going to be 30, um, 38. Okay, so the number at this point is going to be 38. So it's not less than 10, uh, it's not between 10 and 20, uh, and it's not between 20 and 30, but it is between 30 and 40. So I'm going to say that it's probably going to print this one, and I'm going to hope that that's right. Oh, Perfect. Between 30 and 40. Um, excellent. All right, well... Uh, so that was the exercises, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the challenges. Let me just quickly pull it up. Uh, and so when you download those, you can see the file names here. It's basically course name, whatever the course uh, is called, and then underscore. And then if it's exercises, it's exercises. If it's, condi if it's uh, challenges, it's challenges. And if it's solutions, then it just says solutions there. So let's go ahead and open up the challenges. Okay. So we got challenge one. Take an input from the command line, convert it to an int. If it's even, print the numbers even, otherwise print the numbers odd. All right, so combining a couple things. So we'll just do chosen number again, just equal to int, 
input, enter a number, okay. And then we can just do, uh, if it's even, oh, okay, perfect. So if chosen number modulus two equal to zero, print number is even, and again, um, that's because the modulus takes the remainder of a division, and so anything divided by two, if it has a remainder of zero, means that it's even. Uh, and then, otherwise, because there's only two conditions here, we actually don't have to do any LF statements, we can actually just do an L statement, and say print number is odd. Okay. So, let's take a look at this, and instead of exercises, we're going to do challenges. Oh, oops. There we go. Uh, what does that look like for you guys? Oh, sorry. This is a little bit off. There we go. Uh, conditionals and challenges. So let's enter numbers. So let's say 2, which is an even number. Number is even. Enter 1. Number is odd. Um, yeah, any, I think the biggest problem with this, I think even if we enter something like 8.0, yeah. Yeah, because this is a, yeah. So this is going to throw an error. But, you know what, we'll, we'll deal with that later on in the course. For now, at least that code, oh, whoops, sorry, lost all my windows. Uh, at least that code works as we expected, so um, I'm going to call that a pass. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to challenge two. Uh, Taking input from the grand line, well, we got a, uh, got a repeating theme here, so I'm just going to just do this ahead of time. Uh, Taking it from the command line, validate the numbers within one and five for each possible value. Write the code to make it equal 11. Someone inputs one, the result is whatever. Okay, I am just going to do one and five. Uh, so enter a number between one and five. Okay. Um, so this is actually a good use case for not. So I'll show you. I'll show you how to use it in this case. So if not uh, chosen number, so we'll just do this really quickly. Oops. So if not chosen number is greater than zero and less than six. Print number is not in range. Perfect. And so basically, so now I'll just show you exactly what this is going to do. So if we enter a number that's, uh, let's say we say zero, for example. So number is not in range. Let's say we say one. Nothing happens, so we can see that that's working. Let's say we say six. Oh, whoops, sorry. Six. Number is not in range. So um, that's a super easy way to make sure that a number is actually within the range that you're giving. So in this case, one and five, we can just do it in a single line here because we can say that it's greater than zero and less than six, which anything between one and five is. So a super easy way to make sure that the number is not in range. Um, what was, sorry, what was the rest of the challenge? Whatever number they input, make it equal to 11. So there's one more function I'm going to show you because if this happens, we want the we want the program to exit. So we can actually just use another function just called exit. And so now, if we type something that's not in the range, let's say we type zero, the program exits immediately after printing this. And I can show that because I can just say print dot here. So now if I type zero, it doesn't get there. But if I type something within the range, it gets to here because here it just ends before it gets to here so perfect okay so now we have something that checks the range for us so we don't have to worry about that uh, I'm gonna be lazy and I'm just gonna do addition for this one um, just because it's, it's easier I'll actually I'll show you for two the uh, a more long-winded way of doing it but let's just take the example so in this case we're gonna do if uh, chosen number is equal to one Chosen number plus equals 10, because that'll make it 11. Um, in this case, it's only going to be one right answer, so we can do elif 
chosen number is equal to two. Chosen number, let's say, so in this case, let's say times equals two. So that'll multiply the number, or sorry, times equals five. So that will make the number equal to 10. And then we can just do chosen number plus equals one. Now if chosen numbers equal to three, chosen number, we'll just do, we'll do a multiplication and an addition each time. So we'll do times equals, actually, you know what? We'll do times equals four. And then what we can do is we can do chosen number minus equals one. Because three times four is 12, minus one is 11. So there we go. Now if chosen number, oh, number is equal to four, we can just do the flip side of that. So chosen number time, oh, oops, times equals three. Chosen number plus equals one. There we go. And then else. Chosen number, what number are we at? Five times <laughs> equals two. Chosen number plus equals one. So at this point right here, number is 10. At this point, uh, what are we looking at? Number, it, oh, whoops. Number is 12. Number is 12. Oh. And number is 10. Perfect. So now when we do any of this, at the end of this, what we want to do is we want to print chosen number because we've gone ahead and modified the chosen number variable. So um, let's just make sure that we actually have something that works. So let's say 1, we get 11, 2, we get 11, 3, we get 11, 4, we get 13. Uh, am I being an idiot? Well, oh, yeah, I am being an idiot, because that's a 12, so we need to minus equals to 1. And this is why you test your code before you give it to somebody. Um, and that should be 5. Okay. And 5, 11. So now if we go back, 4 should work. Perfect. So that would be how you do that. That's how I would do that. Uh, just super simple. Uh, because there's always going to be only one thing that's being input, we can use these LF statements in chain down here instead of having to use if. So there we go. That's challenge two. Okay, so let's take a look at challenge three. Okay, so there are functions in Python that can be used to determine if strings contain certain characters. For example, the function is digit returns true if all the characters in the strings are digits. Here's an example. So we have numbers, and then we have a bunch of numbers, uh, and then when we do the dot is digit down here, um, you see that it prints true. And then for letters where it says uh, letters, and then even though there is a digit in it, because not everything is a digit, it still prints false. <clears throat> and then there are two similar functions called dot, it's called ends with and is lower. Ends with takes a string as an argument, and it will return true if the strings it's being used on ends with the string being provided, and is lower returns true if the string being provided is all lowercase. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now take input in the command line and using an if statement print if the following conditions are met. Okay. So let's just quickly take the input command line. Input. Enter. Text. Okay, uh, and then we have to check these conditions. So if the string is all numbers, print all numbers. Okay, so that would be that uh, is digit. So we'll do if, oh, sorry, uh, user. So this in a variable, input is equals that. If user input dot is digit, print all numbers what's the next one if the string is all lowercase print all lowercase okay so in this case because it's not possible for numbers to be lowercase we can use elif so elif user input dot is lower print all lowercase i can see where the catch is with this one 
Um, we'll, we'll keep going and then I'll, I'll tell you what's going on here. Um, so if the string ends in yes, print ends in yes. Okay, so this one's kind of fun because we can actually use some of those linking together statements that I mentioned earlier. So dot ends with yes. So I'll actually show you, I'll do it the wrong way and then I'll show you why it's wrong. Print ends in yes and then else print none of the above conditions are true. Right, none, what is it? None of the conditions have been met. Look at that. Okay, perfect. So at first glance, this might seem like this will solve all of our problems for us, but we actually have a couple of issues here. Okay, correct. So, Python, Python 101 operating conditional challenges. Okay. So there's going to be a couple issues with this. <clears throat> so let's just, uh, one of these, we're going to test each case, but so the, the numbers case will work. So we can see it says all numbers. Uh, the is lower. Let's try that. Uh, oh, oops. Do I add any capitals there? And that works, so they're all lowercase. And yes, works. Okay. Now, um, the important thing with this is that you can probably already see where this might go wrong. So if I go ahead and do yes with lowercase, you see we'll get all lowercase. <clears throat> and this is for two different reasons. So the reason that we're only getting all lowercase in this case, oh, and also we'll test the case where none of the above are true, so just random letters that are capitalized. We get none of the conditions that are met, so that's fine. Um, but the, uh, so the, the problem that we're gonna run into here is that um, if we do yes, all lowercase, we only get all lowercase, we don't get anything else. And that's for, again, that's for two reasons. And so the first reason is because the, um, as we're coming through here, so as we're, as, as we're logically stepping through, <clears throat> right, we're stepping through and checking, um, does the input, is it all digits? If so, print all numbers. L if, so else if, the user input is all lowercase, print all lowercase. So that means that even if we were to get to this statement, then we w like it wouldn't actually activate because this one has already activated. So because we have two LF statements that both would be true, this can't happen properly. <clears throat> so, and then even I'll show you what the problem with it, the second problem is. So I'll comment out this all lowercase here first. Uh, so in this case, let's just do lowercase yes. And you'll see none of the conditions have been met. And the reason is, as you can tell, the yes is, is case sensitive, right? And so, that's a problem because I have it capitalized here, but what about the non-capitalized version? Um, so for that, what we can actually do is we can use the statements from before. So we can use or user input dot ends with lowercase yes. And now when we go back and try it, we can do yes. And you see we get ends in yes. But this is a problem because now we can't, just when something is lowercase, now it doesn't work, right? So the way that we can address this actually is that there's one more special little feature of um, if statements that's kind of fun. Uh, and so earlier when I mentioned about the indentation level, I said that something has to be one level of indentation in for it to be considered a code block, right? <clears throat> but what this also means is that there's no limit to how many times you can go, oh well, I shouldn't say that. There's for the most part no limit for how far deep you can actually go with that. So I can just actually chain together another if statement here. So if it is lowercase, this will activate this outer layer. And then inside here, what I can do is I can say if the, uh, well, actually in this case, only the lowercase version could possibly be true. So if user input ends in yes, print ends in yes. And so now we can go back. And when I do it, if I do lowercase yes, you'll see we get both print statements because first it comes in here and it sees, okay, it is lowercase, right? 
And so it goes, it, it starts running this code block and then it hits another if statement and it says, does it end in yes? And it ends in yes. Um, and so now if I go back and I do some lowercase text, it doesn't end in yes. We just get all your lowercase. So all of our conditions have been met. Um, one thing with this as well is that now that we've done all this, we can actually optimize this code a little bit by actually taking this out because you can tell if something is for this to be true, it has to be all lowercase. So we actually don't need the second side. But if you're doing something else, always keep in mind that you can chain these things together and it's super useful, especially with ends with to make sure that you get everything all good to go. Okay, perfect. So um, that was basically the entire module. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop open the module two page here. And so thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can take a look at the next module. The next module is going to be on loops. This is where the programming starts to get really fun. Um, this is where you start being able to do a whole bunch of really powerful things with your code. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, and thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you're on the website, then go ahead and click over and uh, take a look at the next module. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to check it out on the website as well, because I'd really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I definitely have designed this course mostly to be included with the readings. These videos are just supposed to be supplementary to the readings, so uh, be sure to do all the reading and do all the challenges yourself as well, because uh, it'll be really helpful. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching.